So, last episode went remarkably well. Do we have a healed up team? Oh, we do. So, we can move on now to Lily Cove. I've, I am not in touch with the Helen region anymore at all, which is a little bit too bad, a little bit sad, really, because it's probably one of my favorite regions. It was the first region I ever played in. Also, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pokemon Rising Ruby. I think, like, last episode, maybe two episodes ago, I said Omega Ruby. <laughs> that is not true. This is Rising Ruby. Uh, the bug type mono, not lock, mono, just mono run, mono type playthrough, whatever this is. Uh, in the last episode, we defeated the sixth gym without too much trouble, actually, which surprised me quite a lot. In today's episode, we're going to do nothing, too impactful, I think. I think we pretty much have our final team. The team as it looks right now probably is not going to change too much. Because we have pretty good type coverage, we have pretty good Pokemon. I don't think there's a lot of box type Pokemon that will be particularly much better. The potentiality for having a Crossall might be interesting, but that is really about it. Other than that, I think the team as is right now is uh, is pretty fit to take on the rest of the game. The Elite Four and the Champion might be a bit of an issue, but other than that, I think we should be fine. Which gets us back on topic of... The series is... Slowly but surely nearing its end. It's been quite quickly, actually. Uh, because we only have this episode, then the next episode, uh, potentially. And, uh, well, actually, we have probably, like, at least two or three uh, more weeks of episodes. This is episode 18. I'm expecting this series to be done right about episode 25. So that would be, uh, what is it, another seven episodes? So that's about two or so weeks. Let, let's say three weeks, just in case something goes slower than initially anticipated. Which means that uh, right around, like, th this is being recorded and actually uploaded as well, because I am way behind schedule, uh, on November 23rd. So let's just let's just select uh, the, the uh, thingy here, which you cannot see. Uh, let's slash. Uh, so that's one week, that's two weeks, and if we do a third week, that is, uh, say it's like... That would be December 11th, if it's three more weeks, so that's nine more episodes, which I think it'll be last, but let's say nine more episodes. So that'll be December 11th, this ends, which would usually mean December 14th would be the start of the new series, and as I talked about last episode, I'm probably going to, as of December 14th, uh, change the upload schedule to being Monday, Wednesday, Friday being Kingdom Hearts Randomizers, Saturdays being streams, which starting December 5th, uh, I will be doing uh, the community challenges again on live stream. And then uh, December 6th will be the first new retrospective, which I already finished. I'm already working, I think that's at Fortress. So let's go into Towel. Um... I'm already working on the retrospective that might go up in January or February because I also have an idea for a fun uh, countdown video that I might want to have go up in between those retrospectives. So in that case, it would be uh, a retrospective, a countdown video, a retrospective, and then I already have an idea for the game I want to do after that. So that would be March. <laughs> So I'm already working on a lot of things, like, in advance. Also, I took that blast like a pro. Um, and it's actually got me really excited. It got me really, really excited uh, to be working on these uh, projects again. That's not just me playing a video game, which is fun. But uh, I, I do like having just a tad bit more to do and just, like, slightly higher quality content. Because as much as I like doing this, I, I, I've talked about this last episode, so I'm not going to go into it too deeply today, I guess, until we get a better topic, I will. Um, like, what I'm doing right now, there's no reason for me not to do this live, other than the fact that from a scheduling perspective, it's a lot easier for me to just record like an hour to like two hours at a time and then I just have a week's worth of videos. But from a like, content perspective, there's nothing other than editing, I guess. Th there is editing, which makes this better than if I did it live. But that's such a minimal thing to begin with that it doesn't really matter to me anyway. 
So, and then let's take a look at what are the upsides of the, doing this live rather than in a video series. Literally everything else. Mainly being um, having interaction with the people watching while I'm playing. Also, I will probably make less stupid mistakes. We Oh, wait a second. Um, yeah, so maybe the nine episodes thing will end up being the case. Because uh, I kind of momentarily forgot that we also need to do the... Uh, what is it? Mampire? Yeah, Mampire. We, we need to do that first. So, kind of forgot about that. Yeah, uh, I guess that's what we're doing today then. And you seem like you're gonna heal me. Hold on a moment. I don't know if I need to fight you first. Like, I would in, like, Gen 5. Nope, you, you just heal me. That, that is very nice of you. I, I appreciate that a lot. I really, really do. So, Mumpire it is today. Let's see, we're six minutes into this recording. I do not remember... Wait a second, what is this to the left here? I do not remember this. It seems like this would be a cave. Is that a post-game thing? Is that a post... Is that definitely not an added thing? Because it's not as easy to, like add environmental changes to uh, to the 3D games in comparison to the 2D games, because the 2D games are just change the sprites and some collision data and, and that is it, right? Uh, but in the 3D games, it's not as easy as that, uh, as far as I know. That's why still ROM hacks, even though ROM hacks have been uh, losing some popularity in general, I feel, that's a level 40 wild Pokemon. I mean, I'm level 55. So I'll probably be fine. I don't even know why I'm fighting you, honestly. Why am I? It, it doesn't make a lot of sense, because I, I don't need to experience, I don't need to catch. I, I can't even catch the thing. And we're going to be facing a lot of ghost-type Pokémon here, so I'm guessing... the soccer point is going to come in real useful? I don't think I have anything else to deal with ghost-types, necessarily. Ghost or dark moves. Something on my team might have, like, Bite or Crunch? That's worth checking. That, that would be better than Soccer Punch, for sure. Uh, you probably don't. It's been a while, okay? Uh, yeah, you don't. You have Pursuit, which, technically speaking, is probably better than Soccer Punch, because it hits always. So maybe Roller is a better option. Uh, but let's Soccer Punch first, and ask questions later. This is exactly what I meant. Uh, I'm also going to put on my hoodie, because it's cold in here. I'm just always cold. It's kind of like a thing I do. It's uh, Do you have pressure? You have me? Oh my god, you are such a bitch. You know what? At this point, I don't even care about the type advantage anymore. I'm obviously not going to use Slash, but I can still use Discharge, which will probably still kill you. Then again, Dusclops is a pretty bulky Pokemon, so it might live this. It didn't. It did not. I've also been looking into uh, microphone upgrades uh, for two very specific reasons. One of them being, uh, I've had this microphone for literally years. It, it's been quite a while. I, I, I cannot switch out because of Mean Look. That is... Disappointing. I No, that's not what happened. I just pressed the wrong button. I can't switch out because I'm an idiot, apparently. Uh, I've had this microphone for years. If you go back to, like, matter of fact, I think I've had this microphone. I'm going to look into this as we go through. Oh, Ford died. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to look into this real quick. Because I think I might have had this microphone since 2012, which is quite a while. So it's pretty much due for an upgrade. It, it, it does a fine job. But uh, I would very much like to have something different. And as I want to like focus a little bit more attention towards the more edited content, having something that is more geared towards that might not be the worst idea ever. So I, I was looking at a... Uh, a Studio set for a microphone with like a, a shock mount, which this one I have right now doesn't work that well. Ah, uh, that didn't do a lot of damage, did it? And uh, one of them, like, isolation 
screens behind it. You, you have a lot of uh, YouTubers, pretty much all YouTubers, and that that like have good quality audio, um, have these these isolation foams on the walls. But what you can also do, um, also th there's a lot of people who have isolation material, sound isolation material behind them. While in theory that does something, it's kind of a waste of your time, money, and space because it, it's mostly most of the effect is from uh, sound that bounces from like a wall close to you back into the microphone, and then just like it doesn't really create an echo in effect, but it, it creates a, a less quality sound, especially if you then have to noise reduct it. It, it just starts to sound robotic real quickly. The sound that like bounces off this wall then all the way back to the other side of the room and then back into the microphone that's nearly non-existent so putting isolation foam up on the back wall is usually just a sign that people don't really think about what they're doing and are just doing things because hey it's isolation foam if i cover my entire fucking room in it that'll surely help instead of just thinking okay so where does this stuff actually help me and just putting it there so as a result of that, there is this system where uh, instead of putting it up on your walls, there's a little screen on the back side of like your microphone where it's not as effective oftentimes. But if you get close enough to the microphone, which for a lot of times, like for podcast related things, like which these review voiceovers and even let's play voiceovers really are, they're just podcasts and podcasts are just like radio shows where you don't play music. Um, so, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to refer to them as radio microphones, because at the end of the day, people doing radio, doing podcasts, doing Let's Plays, pretty much use microphones for the same exact purpose, and that's just talking into them, and you want a like a natural, warm-sounding uh, audio quality to that. As opposed to, like, singing microphones, which do things significantly different, as opposed to, like, um, environmental recordings, which uh, do things differently uh, again. So, radio microphones, right? A screen like that usually is pretty much good enough for doing those types of recordings. So I was looking into um, those kind of systems where you have a shock mount with one of those screens attached to it, so that if you talk into the microphone and you're close up, which again, you probably will be because you're doing this radio style, um, you definitely are not gonna have ghost types, right? So I was looking into that, and turns out that's very expensive. <laughs> uh, because I would want to have a new microphone, as well as one of those new shock mounts with a screen. And, uh, the microphone I would probably go with would be, uh, I don't know, what was it called? The Rode... NT1, I think, which is a um, USB microphone. I, I'm probably going to stay a USB microphone because it's just easier. And hell is it expensive to get uh, both a decent XLR microphone and an audio interface. That's like, that runs you like 100 for each one of those. So that's 200 by itself, roughly. And then uh, the, the system with the... Uh, sound isolation on the shock mount was only like 170. <laughs> so that was a little bit too expensive for me, so we're not going to be doing that anytime soon. Sadly. Uh, I was really looking forward to maybe... And there are cheaper alternatives. I found one um, of their shock mounts, which was just 40 bucks. But the sound isolation foam, um, it was... It was literally just strips of foam, rather than it having any, like, texture to it. And the... You probably know what it looks like, right? It, it's it's the, like the pyramid shapes uh, on the foam. It's like a lot of triangles. It's not just a flat piece of foam. And that is mostly done to increase surface area. So if you just put up... Let me think about how I'm going to do this because I don't really want to face too many trainers. So if you literally just put up... I just realized this is not where we're supposed to be going. <laughs> I'm going for this sentence, I swear. Um, if you literally just put up flat foam, that is significantly less effective 
because of its lower surface area. Also, Bogbras will do a lot of damage against uh, this Trevenant. So, that's not really worth it. It'll help. It will definitely help, because it's still foam. It, it's still going to absorb a lot of that sound. Uh, but it's not going to be as good. And anything that does bounce off that foam, because, again, lower surface area, so there will be more bounce, goes directly into your microphone, because now you don't have things bouncing off a wall that's like three or four or five feet away, but a screen that's literally like centimeters or like inches, if you're freedom units, away from the microphone. So it, it might, I'm not going to say it might make the quality worse, but any benefit that you gain from having the foam there might be negated by that as a downside, which you see my point. I'm not going to spend 40 bucks on something that might not do anything good for me at all. So uh, we're not upgrading any microphone standard anytime soon because as is, I've been uh, spending a decent fuck amount of money as is on uh, the channel this last month with the Crash Bandicoot video and the Kingdom Hearts video, both of which um, weren't very cheap to uh, to produce. Uh, well, to, not to produce, producing them is free because I do all the work myself, uh, but to like... Uh, do the ad campaigns for them. That, that ain't very cheap. It's it's working. It's generating subscribers at a real nice pace. It's just uh, the other side of that coin is it, it is a very big coin because it, it, it'd be expensive. So it's it's not something that you can like keep up all that consistently. Uh, un unless of course you do also generate some kind of income uh, long term from it that. You're pretty much guaranteed, which I'm not. So we're not going to be doing that. Okay, so again. Fuck. <laughs> this is not where we're supposed to be going. I'm looking into this microphone thing. Uh, let's see. I need something with a face cam. Because obviously uh, I have videos from 2011 here. Which do not have face cam. So I can't be sure. I think at this point I already had it. And these are March 2012 videos. So, let's see. I didn't do face cam for quite a while. Oh, this could be bad. Um, Bogbos, the Gorgas, if I can outspeed. And then... Hurricane, the Florigas? I don't know. Uh, these are all also... Okay, uh, let's see. This seems... Okay, so here I actually am using a headset microphone, which I should not do. Um... And that is in 2012. So in 2012, it seems like I didn't have this microphone yet. Um, we're, we're going to figure this out together. We're, oh, no, 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 I'm wrong, wrong, wrong. You, you can't see what I'm doing in my browser. So this might be very weird for you to listen to. But uh, I'm going to figure this out for everyone involved. Don't you worry. One of my Pokemon just died. Uh, and Gorgeist is also... Okay, so we're actually in a bit of a uh, bit of trouble here. I did a Dream Drop Distance review, which is no longer public, because again, it's not in English. Uh, I guess we just attack Florigas this turn, because I didn't pay attention to whether or not we outspeed. You know what? Let's surf. Let's not surf. Let's... Hmm. What's bug bars? I don't know how bug interacts with fairy. I honestly don't care too much. That wasn't too. Oh, that was air slash. Okay, it's not very effective. I, I was kind of afraid of that. Uh, these are the wrong pages I'm looking at. I'm I'm still looking at when I got this microphone because I honestly do not remember. <laughs> Uh, let's see... Do we have... The thing is, at this point, I'm, I'm looking at when I started using actual thumbnails, which means that I can't see into the videos themselves unless I click on them, in which case you'll also hear the video playing. And I am now at the point where I'd started uh, shifting my content into English. Because uh, this is the Live Platinum. This is one of my first Let's Plays I did in English, Live Platinum. And one of these videos, um, yeah, 
part 12, going back to the second gym, has like 10,000 views almost, because... There's a very good reason for that. Like Platinum has an issue where you can skip a gym and then suddenly need the HM that that gym enables you to uh, use. And you need a walkthrough rules glitch or cheat to get back to that point. So people were looking for that, clearly. Um, here's my creepy past that I wrote in also October 2012, which has 50,000 views. I think I, I'm sure I, I did that one with, with this microphone. I am quite sure indeed. But I can't find any video with face cam that proves that. At least not without also having a thumbnail. How far are we into this episode? Am I just... We're 20 minutes into this episode. I should hurry the fuck up because I actually want to do something useful today. And it doesn't seem like so far we've done anything useful. So... Um... It's another one of those. We're already in 2013 and I still don't have an answer. Again, because I wasn't really using face cam. I was using face cam in my Pokemon Black Randomizer Nuzlocke. Hold on. And that was April 2013. I think I was using a face cam here. I was not. I was not using a face cam back then. Okay. Uh, oh, that's the... I've done three randomized on those locks of Pokemon Black at this point, and I've used face cam in two of them, but not in the first one. Have I only done two? I think I've done one since returning to YouTube as well, right? Okay, so I have no idea where the actual fuck I'm supposed to be going. Was I supposed to be going up? You're supposed to go up... I do not remember my umpire at all. I am... I'm thoroughly confused. Also, I love the description. I, I very much love the description of this first episode of the Pokemon Black Randomizer Nuzlocke uploaded in 2013. It says, A new game, new Pokemon, and probably with a typo, just as much rage as we used uh, to... As, as we are used to... Uh, because it's a Nuzlocke at the end of the day. That is the entire description for that video. I can't imagine why it didn't do well in search engines at all. L let's look at the tags. Let's look at the tags, right? The tags are actually a little bit better. Not much better, but a little bit better. Uh, they are Pokemon, Nuzlocke, Pokemon Black, Pokemon Black Nuzlocke, Randomizer, Randomizer Nuzlocke, Black, Black Nuzlocke, Black Randomizer Nuzlocke, Vlogger Games, Vlogger Games, uh, Let's Play Pokemon Black, Let's Play Pokemon, Video Game Series, YouTuber, and Maryland. I don't know why I added Maryland. Maybe I talked about him in the episode? That is a really good question. Or was it just one of those stupid kids... We thought adding famous... Because at that point, Maryland was doing very well for himself uh, in the stats. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I remember. I remember now, yeah. Uh, because I, I see... Uh, my first... My starter Pokemon was a Meryl. I named all my Pokemon in that series after YouTubers. And Maryland was my Meryl. Which I think the idea behind that still was if I made my Pokemon after YouTube and then can like use them in the tags and descriptions. I might get like more views, which that is not how that works. That is not how anything works. I still don't know where the fuck I'm supposed to go in this place. Please somebody tell me how to get out of here because I am confused very much, very much so confused. We haven't made any progress today at all. We've made it through one route. Well, half a route, really. And then another half a route, which was a really, really short route. And then we've just been kind of fucking about in Mount Pia ever since. I... Have they changed Mount Pia from the original games? to Omega Ruby Alpha Sephira and I just never realized because I could have sworn in the original games you don't go up to the 
top of Mount Polya through the inside, but through the outer. Maybe this is a rising ruby thing. Maybe there's a rising ruby thing where you have to go through the entire inside. Beforehand? I... I and then, like, the, the... No, we just... I was so close. When I decided to go back, I was on the right floor. To actually go where I needed to go. That's kind of embarrassing. That is really... Wow. Yeah, I don't think this is a change from Omega Ruby into Rising Ruby at all. I think that's just me being a massive idiot. So are we going to make it through all of the fights in Mount Pyre today? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yeah. Because I wasted a lot of time talking about very useless things and not focusing on the game. So if this ends up being a 35 minute long episode, so be it. You know, it's sometimes... That just happened. Sometimes we get a 25 minute episode, sometimes we get a 20... 35 minute episode. I, I cannot talk anymore, apparently. And so far, this is not actually too difficult. That sounded like a chingling? Which seems very unlikely, but let's give that a shot. Maybe it's a, uh... The pre-evolution. Yeah, it's a... Oh, it is a chingling. I was thinking about a chimaco. It, it is a chingling. Fair enough. Chimaco used to be one of the rarest Pokemon in the game. Like, there was a 1% chance of you getting it in a patch of grass which only had like six, six patches of grass, if I recall correctly, something stupid like that. And now once you got it, it's pretty useless. It's really not a good Pokemon. So I don't know why it was so rare. Okay. At least Feebas, right? Which was another one, which was probably even more rare. I don't know if Phoebus was more rare or just more difficult to get. The thing is, right, once you got the, the spot where Phoebus can appear, it's not a guarantee that you get Phoebus in the original games. It isn't. It's, uh, I think it's a 50-50 shot between Phoebus and Magikarp. But at least the percentage chance of you getting a Phoebus on that very specific spot are decently high. Even though the chance of you actually having the right spot to get a Feebas are really, really low. While Chimaco can appear in any of the, I think there's six, maybe there's eight, uh, patches of grass. But it only has a 1% chance of appearing. So which one would you consider more rare? I'd probably still consider Feebas more rare. And Feebas actually, like... Once you get it, you still need to put in a lot of work to evolve it through the beauty mechanic in the game. And then it becomes useful. But at least it becomes useful and actually pretty good. Melodic is a pretty good Pokemon. At least for Gen 3 standards, because Gen 3 was not very balanced. Uh, with like the physical special splits and stuff like that. Even in Gen 4, since you has one, and it's a bitch to take care of. On the other hand, you have Chimaco. Which, literally, cannot do anything useful. It is, it is a real piece of crap. I, I do not like Chamaco. It's way too difficult to get. Again, only in Gen 3. In, in Gen 4 we got Chingling, which was a friendship evolution, which still, friendship evolutions generally tend to be at least somewhat worth it, but oh, it was just, no, 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 no. Uh, Chingling is not worth your time uh, investments at all. But at least it's easy to get a Chingling. It is what my point is. Whereas getting a Chamaco was near impossible. It's still like, okay, Chingling, I'll give it this, right? Chingling is a very early game way to get a Psychic type Pokemon. Because in at least a Pikmin Platinum, I think probably in Dominant Pearl as well, uh, you can get a Chingling before fighting uh, the fourth gym, the, the fighting type gym. Uh, I think. She's called Maylene, if I'm correct. Um, which, having a Psychic type, even if it isn't the best Psychic type in the game, just having a Psychic type on your team is going to give you a real advantage. And in that sense, Jingling has its place in, in the playthrough of Gen 4. And if you can change it into a Chimaco, it becomes even better. It, it is better than a Jingling. It's still not good, but 
in that regard, it's very similar to something like a Catapé to Butterfree and Weedle to um, Kukuna and then Beedrill. Early on, it's pretty good because it evolves rapidly. Well, Chainlink doesn't evolve rapidly, but in its very like limited context, it, it is useful and it is good. But you don't want to keep it around in your team necessarily for too long because the downside to it evolving to its max level at level 10, in the case of Butterfree and Beedrill, is that it's very powerful early on. But then when you get about halfway through the game, you start to realize that, yeah, actually, you're starting to fall behind because everything else is evolving and surpassing it uh, through those evolutions because later evolutions generally do tend to give a bigger boost upon evolution uh, and have higher base stats in general. So uh, you kind of leave your Butterfree or your uh, Beedrill behind at some point. Uh, usually, anyway. Not all people do. I wish I had Fork right about now. I'm not saying with Cup. Chingling and Chamaco kind of have that same thing going for them in Gen 4. Where you can use their Psychic type to your advantage in that one gym. But after that gym is over... They kind of lose any use they had, which admittedly is more use than they had in Gen 3 itself. Because in Gen 3, Chingling didn't exist, obviously. But in Gen 3, Chamaco was really difficult to get. And at the point you could get it, there was nothing it was particularly useful for anymore. Because this is the point, also in Gen 3, where you would get Chimaco. And you would get it in this specific area. There would be grass on the left and the right. Of, uh, of this uh, altar here. That's where you would get it. Um, let, let's just review what we have left. A Psychic type gym. Probably not going to be too useful for that. A water type gym. Probably not going to be too useful for that. The Elite Four, which starts with a dark type user. Definitely not a good idea. Uh, then we have a... I don't know the order, but we also have a ghost type user in the Elite Four. Definitely not a good idea. We have a dragon type user in the Elite Four. Don't really care, probably just need a good Pokemon for that, not specifically a Psychic type. Uh, we have a Ice type user. Again, not necessarily relevant at all. And then we have a Steel type user. Uh, or another Water type user if you're playing Emerald. Again, not particularly uh, relevant. And even then, even then, if you needed a Psychic type, you could go get a Grumpig, which is a lot better. And a lot easier to get. There's literally no reason for you to get a Chamaco. Ever. Other than for completing the Pokedex. It's, it's just placed there to make completing the Pokedex more difficult. Which is fine. Th that's what legendaries are in a nutshell. Right? I was really expecting that to kill. <laughs> Damn it. Um, that's what legendaries are for, right? Making the... Completion a little bit more difficult, and then sometimes some other Pokemon uh, require, like, um, another example for something that's not very useful is uh, Manaphy. It's difficult to get, but then when you get it, you also need to breed it to get a Fion, <laughs> which is um, fairly useless, really. It's just, it, it's a weaker Manaphy, and that's everything there is to it. It's literally just a weaker Manaphy. It's, I think it's a, like, it has the same stats as a Ditto, right? Because um, all these, like, fairies, which most of them aren't fairy type at this point, so this is kind of weird, but we used to refer to them as the, the fairies, the mythical Pokemon, right? Which are, are like, Mew, and Salabi, and Jirachi. Actually, I don't know if Jirachi also follows this rule, uh, so take that with a grain of salt. And Malafi, and Victini. I don't know if Gen 6 has one. I don't think Gen 6 has one. Uh, Gen 7, I don't think, has one either. Uh, but, but those Pokemon, right, uh, they all have base 100 stats across the board. Then, of course, uh, with natures and IVs that can change, but base stats across the board are 100 in each stat. And Ditto has, I think, 80 in each stat. Maybe Ditto has 60. Uh, but Fion has 80 in each stat, which just makes it a worse mana fee. But... I think it has the same base stat total as Ditto. Uh, let's look this up as we go through uh, through this fight, which is not Pyro, sure. 
Uh, base stats for Ditto. Bulbapedia, give me something. Give me something, give me something. Today, please. Taking a while. Okay, so no, Ditto is actually much worse. It's 48 across the board. Uh, whereas uh, Fion... Uh, we can Earthquake you as well. Fiona, I think, has 80 across the board. Um, let's see... Where are... No, stats. It's got 80 across the board, so it's it's much better than Ditto. Uh, that's my mistake. Uh, but still, it is just a worse version of Manaphy, which has 100 across the board. How far are we into this episode? 35 minutes. It's maybe going to be a 40-minute episode, but at least... like The first 10 minutes of this episode were spent... Talking about fairly useless shit. Also, Charizard is literally the worst thing for me to be up against. <laughs> so that's not a great thing for me. Um, the, the first time or so minutes of this episode was spent just rambling about last episode's topic. So I feel like it's 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 only fair that this episode is a little bit longer. So how much does Rodeo do on its first hit? <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of damage. That's a citrus berry, but that's just 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 don't just don't murder me in one hit. That's all I'm asking. Also, don't burn me. You murder me in one hit with a critical hit. Okay, insult to injury. I don't even think that was necessary. I do not think that was necessary at all. Um, okay. So, let's go into hair dye. I, I, I gotta focus you for a moment because I don't know what to do. I guess Fork and Discharge is probably better than... I'm going to revive both of them. I was thinking either Roller or Fork. Because Roller can build up a... Thank you for killing Hair Uh Can build up a Rollout. But if Fire Blast hits, that's a waste of a revive. If it doesn't hit, the next Pokemon out will be dead. Like, very bad. So I'm going to chance it. I'm going to go for a rollout, which will, unless it's critical hit, not one shot the Charizard at this range. But if you miss your your Fire Blast, I will have a third tier rollout for your next Pokemon. Use Air Slash, which... Fair enough, I was at a range where... Another critical... Okay, it was Air Slash. Fair enough. It has a high crit ratio. Still, you got two hits off of, uh, off of my roller, and two of those were critical hits. So I'm a bit salty. Just a, just a little bit. Just, just a little bit salty. This charge should take out Charizard now, and now we only have one Pokemon left to take out. And the next episode, we also need to do some story-related stuff. I just... It's a Rhyperion. Um, I guess Knife is finally gonna do something useful again. It's been a while. <laughs> we can Giga Drain this thing to death in probably... I don't want to say one hit, but... I'm kind of thinking maybe in one hit? You outspeed me. I'm sorry, what? You outspeed me. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that is real not good. So you're going to outspeed me as well. But that's a move that requires a recharge, so... Ooh. Means you're probably going to use it again, honestly. And... If I can switch back into knife when you have to recharge... I can Giga Drain you. And especially after being hit with an Earthquake previous, you're dead. I'm assuming you're mostly physically defensive as well, so this is going to do quite a number on you. <laughs> and that is Rhyperior done with. Uh, Rhyperior did scare me for a moment, I will admit that. Rhyperior did scare me for a moment, and I wasn't a huge fan, but uh, we, we pulled through. We did pull through. Even though I got very confused earlier this episode and wasn't entirely sure where I had to go. Let's uh, speed through these cutscenes and then uh, go and and this episode. Because it's been quite a long episode so far and I want to record two today uh, before... You know what, actually, that other anecdote I'll, uh, I'll save for the next episode. Because I, I can't get into a story now. 
at the end of an episode. That would be weird. Just as weird as that visual effect was. And that sound effect. Why is it a different sound effect for obtaining an item there? We gotta go to sleep. Oh, but we don't have anything that can use fly, do we? We have a Pokemon that can use fly. Never mind. We have two, as a matter of fact. Um, I'm gonna give it to... To Cup. Because honestly, Cup is the least useful thing on my team as is. And Hurricane isn't really doing much. I prefer using Air Slash with uh, with Hair Dye anyway. So we have a Pokemon that can use Fly now. Next episode, we'll be using that to go to Slayport City and do some more Team Magma stuff. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be a nine-episode thing. We're going to probably end on that Friday, as as I expected. Well, as I didn't expect, but as I did talk about. It's been the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, I'm a vlogger. You've been awesome. Do not forget to leave a like, come and subscribe to my channel if you have enjoyed this video, which, honestly, I don't even know why I'm saying that anymore. Who the hell is subscribing through a Let's Play part, especially, like, part 18? Unless you've been watching this, you're, you're not going to, like care about. It would be very interesting to run an ad campaign just promoting a random Let's Play part and seeing how many people actually give a shit about clicking on it. Just just for the shits and giggles. It'd be a very expensive shits and or giggles uh, thing, but it, it'd, it'd be funny. 